Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mitch, Orb Agent Canadian, and today I'm bringing you guys another tutorial, this time in Sony Vegas. So I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on uh, setting up your gameplay commentary setup. Don't really know what this error is. Oh, couldn't find a file. Oh well, I deleted that. That would explain it. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up your uh, project settings as well as um, rendering your videos in high quality widescreen. So now what you're going to want to do is when you first get into this, you're going to want to make sure you change your uh, project video properties. And to do that, it's pretty simple. You're just going to want to click this little icon here with the cursor on, I think that's a chart or whatever it is. And then you're going to want to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to zoom it in here. I'm not going to I'm not going to go uh, spend too much time on this. I'll run through it pretty quickly. You're just going to want to make a custom template, title it whatever you want. I would just recommend titling it HD YouTube or something along those lines. And then for the video tab, you're going to want to go ahead and make the width 1280 and the height 720. That way you get the nice 1280 by 720 on a YouTube widescreen. Field order, none, progressive scan, uh, pixel aspect ratio. Just continue that at 1.0, which is just the square pixel aspect ratio. Frame rate, you're going to want to put that at double NTSC. That way you get a nice uh, smooth frame rate on your video. Pixel format, 8 bits fine. Full uh, resolution rendering, that's what you're going to want to change. That'll probably be on good. You're going to want to boost that up to uh, best as well as uh, somewhere else. I'm going to have to change something. Not really sure where, but just copy these settings. Everything should be good. The motion blur Gaussian or Gaussian. Not sure how to pronounce that. Don't care either. So now you're going to want to hop into the audio tab and then again, just copy these. These settings are fine, but uh, the only thing I can say you could change if you really, really wanted is uh, change the sample rate to... Uh, 48,000 if you wanted, but 44,100 is fine. Either one will work perfectly. Go ahead and click apply. Then all of this, just uh, these these don't even matter. They're nothing. So once you have that, you're going to want to go ahead and just click um, start all new projects with these settings. That way you don't have to go ahead and redo these. So just go ahead and check that off. Apply. Okay. Now you're done. Now what I would recommend doing from here is go ahead and right click, insert video track, insert audio track. And then from there, you're going to want to just find your gameplay. Just choose, I don't know, I'm just going to choose a random gameplay. Just choose this. And then, so now you have your uh, video footage as well as your audio for that footage. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it short because this is really unnecessarily long. I'm just showing you it for an example. And uh, as you can tell, if this will load. Oh, wait, it won't load. I forgot I didn't uh, render that one out. So let's try with this. Here we go. There we go. So let's just go ahead and chop that off short. Sorry guys, this is obvious, obviously not a pre-rehearsed commentary. This is just live and I'm just trying to do this quickly, smoothly and uh, effectively to teach you guys how to render. So hopefully this will be helpful. So as you can tell, this is a square. It's not widescreen. So the reason that happens for me is because I have a standard uh, square TV. It's not a widescreen TV. So when I import it, my clips are like this and um, this might happen for widescreen TVs as well, I'm not sure. But uh, regardless of that, to change it to the widescreen, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and click, right click on your clip, go down to properties, get rid of maintain aspect ratio. Uncheck that, I just uncheck loop because I don't really, doesn't really do anything. And then um, go ahead and click OK. But another thing you can do, which is I would highly recommend, is sometimes you'll notice your video gets this little kind of ghosting effect. You're just going to want to disable the resample and then rather than having it uh, kind of <laughs> choppy, uh, that was obnoxiously squeaky, but uh, rather than having it kind of choppy and like kind of it fades through when you're moving really fast on screen, everything will be more smooth and it'll look better. So then from there, you still have the black bars around your video. To get rid of that, it's again pretty simple. Just go ahead and go to event pan and crop. Go ahead and click that and then just, you know, drag these bars around until you get it nicely cropped whatever and then save those settings by uh, just clicking typing something in and click save I already have one made right here PVR crop click that and uh, I got it nicely cropped for myself so now that's looking good um, from there you're gonna want to go ahead and go to video FX if you're really tedious and want to get this looking crystal clear perfect for uh, when you upload it to YouTube go to color corrector and uh, drop down a studio RBG to computer RB RGB. That way it will uh, enhance the colors basically to make it look better on a computer rather than on your TV. So as you can tell, that did adjust the color slightly, which is all you need really. And now to get into adding your commentary to the gameplay, you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, double click on the volume there and lower the dBs. I like to just use negative 22. That seems to work nicely. So you can still kind of hear the gameplay in the background, but not too much. And then just go ahead and find your uh, 
go ahead and find an audio. I don't know. I'm just going to use a random audio. I don't care. All right, let's go ahead and use uh, this Ace Striker audio, whatever. It makes no difference to me. And then line it up however you want with your clip. Once it's lined up, that's fine. If you want to adjust the volume because maybe you were talking too quietly in that video, go ahead and change it there. And uh, I record my audio using Audacity. I'm going to do a tutorial on that later where I show you guys how to do dual commentaries, so don't worry about that. And uh, I'm sure most of you guys know that that's pretty basic. So whatever you record your audio with is fine. Then just, yeah, you just transfer it in. Make sure you have your gameplay audio drop down. Otherwise, it's going to be really obnoxious when people watch your video because they're just going to be hearing the gameplay in the background the whole time, which is really goddamn annoying. So, yeah, you don't want to be hearing really loud gameplay. You want to be able to hear the noises, but you want to be able to hear their commentary over the top of it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty simple. From there, you're going to want to go ahead and click File, Render As, and then you're going to want to use these settings that I'm going to show you here. I already have one made, but I'll just show it to you anyways. You're going to want to go save as type. Go all the way down to Windows Media Video 11. Click that, and then you're going to want to click Custom and copy these settings. And obviously just title the template again, HD YouTube, and then settings for HD quality on the interwebs. Whatever you want to title it is fine. And then this is what you're going to want to copy. You're going to want to include audio, obviously. Change the mode to CBR. Format Windows Media, media ugh, I can't even talk right now, it's kind of 1.30 in the morning, so I'm sorry. And uh, change the format to Windows Media Audio 9.2. The uh, attributes, just copy whatever I have there, I don't feel like saying that. Again, video, just copy all this stuff I have here, and you should be fine. The only thing that this is probably, that you're really going to have to adjust, because most of this should match up your project settings. But the only thing is right here, the video smoothness will probably be around 60, 70, 80. Just boost it all the way up to 100% and uh, that'll make your video again better. And now bitrate, um, just go ahead and click Internet LAN. And uh, what I like to do is just boost it up to 6 megabytes, which is fine. You can go higher than that if you want, but that's just going to make the file size bigger. I just use 6 megabytes because it makes your video quality look good enough. There's no need for it to be better than that, in my opinion. And that's it. So... Yeah, just, and oh, the one last thing you need to do, but it, it should be set to this on default anyways. Go to video rendering quality in the project tab and just use, just click use project settings. It should already be set to that anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. Go ahead and click OK. Obviously save that template so you don't have to do it every time. And then you just go ahead and click it. And don't worry about this as long as this is not checked or this is not checked. You should be fine. Just save project markers and media file. Nobody cares. Just go ahead and title your video whatever you want ah uh, it's fine who cares and then click save and it should render it in uh, widescreen HD like it is here so that's good quality for YouTube and I hope this helped you guys I'll have another tutorial hopefully where I'll put some more time so it'll be more rehearsed for you guys another time because I'm lazy right now good night or not really good night because I'm uploading this tomorrow yeah so good night for me I'm going to bed see you guys Oh, and if you're looking for a more detailed, better laid out, and I guess more rehearsed and uh, well edited tutorial on how to render in HD for uh, YouTube, go ahead and check uh, Operator Perry's uh, Sony Vegas tutorial. I'll just include the link or annotation on screen now. So if you want more help, go ahead and click that. Otherwise, I guess you guys should be fine. I really need to go to bed now. Goodbye.